everybody and welcome to this channel Milestone Study. My name is Anusha and in this video we are going to talk about summarized spoken text. If you are new to our channel, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and like this video so that I know that I'm doing a great job. Comment anything below and we'll reply to your queries and your concerns. Also remember that you can use our website milestonestudy.com.au to practice all the necessary practice questions and take a mock test as well. For a free trial, please refer to the video that is linked below in the description. For all other class queries as well, you have our number in the description. I know that you guys are preparing for your tests. You guys are taking classes and practicing all day and night to get your desired score. So I'm here to help you prepare for PD test and also be your friend along the way. If you have not watched our study plan video, please, after this video, go to that video and watch it out. All other videos are also posted for describe image, for speaking, writing, reading. And because YouTube has a lot of resources, some of you might be overwhelmed with it and you might be confused which videos to watch, which videos not to watch. Therefore, if you want us to help you, we also offer you a toolkit. In the toolkit, you are given all the videos in a structured manner, only the ones that you need to watch. You can Purchase our toolkit, contact us on WhatsApp, Facebook or Instagram and get it over with. I'm ready with the summarized spoken text template. Are you? Now, the first thing is you need to go to milestonestudy.com.au for the template. Okay, I'll provide it here as well so you can take it, take your notes as well. But if you want it for later purpose in a digital format, you can get it at milestonestudy.com.au. If you have already got your access code, username and password, hit it here. Otherwise, you can use sign up via Viber. OK, on your mobile device, you need Viber. Download Viber if you already don't have it. Then from there, you can use sign up via Viber. You will get this scanner, this scan QR code thing. OK, use your mobile phone to scan through Viber. Then you have to send this code to the Viber messenger. OK. And from there, you get an OTP, type the OTP here and sign in. Then you will get your username and your password, okay? Use that to sign in. Now, because I've already created mine, I'll just log into my account. Here is our dashboard. From here, I'm gonna take you to the templates. Where are the templates? Just close all the disclaimers. Some videos which are very useful are also uploaded, also linked here in the website. Uh, for now, I'm just going to close this. You can see the links here. You click on the links and go to a particular question. Now, let's move on to where is the study materials here. On the left panel, sometimes you might need to click these three lines, okay? From here, you click on PD practice study materials, and then here is the templates, okay? All the templates are given out here. We are particularly looking at summarized spoken text template. So let's zoom in to this part, summarized spoken text. All right, see, summarized spoken text is an important question because it gives us 10 points for listening and for writing, right? Therefore, we cannot compromise on this question type. If you are specially targeting for 79 plus, this question, you have to get 10 by 10. The starting of this template, the audio was mainly about people's something. Now this something has to be a noun, okay? If you don't know what are nouns, uh, research, Google, you know, watch on YouTube and try to figure out what are nouns. And those nouns must suit, must feel good, sound good in the template, okay? The speaker stated such words as their dash and their dash. Moreover, their dash and their dash were also discussed in the lecture. These are all in past tense. If you see the, temp the tenses was stated, were, was, and concluded, all of them in simple past tense, okay? Make note of that. Were also discussed in the lecture. In addition to this, the discussion was about their dash and also about their dash. Finally, the speaker concluded the lecture by stating the facts about their dash. As I said, in the blanks, you are supposed to fill up nouns, okay? Nouns or noun phrases, both are fine. What are noun phrases? Noun phrases are those words which comprise of a noun, okay? I'll show you in a demo what I mean. 
Okay, so take a screenshot or copy this down. Pause the video and copy this down, please. Or later, you can come back to our website and download it from there. Now, let's go to one of the questions, okay? Zoom out here, go to all questions. Uh, you can also go through dashboard to a particular question, yeah? All right, I'm using all questions and practice now. Then from here on the top panel, you can go to practice. Let's get rid of this. Uh, since we are doing summarized spoken text, we go to listening section and summarize spoken text, yeah? I have my pen and paper here to take down notes because I'm supposed to take only nouns or noun phrases. For the newcomers, for the beginners, let me explain this question type a little bit. You will be given 10 minutes to answer, to write your answer in this box, okay? Here, you have 10 minutes to finish this task. And the timer is running here. It's a countdown timer. And the word count is 50 to 70. Make sure you're only writing 50 to 70. Anyone writing 71, zero. Not like literally zero, but that will deduct your marks. And anyone writing 49 words, deducting the marks, okay? The audio, the lecture, we'll be talking about some topics. We have to write a summary on this. Uh, as we already have a template, we don't need to worry much. But remember, when you are distributing your time, one or two minutes will be taken by the audio. The rest of eight minutes, you write the template, you write the blanks, and check your work. Checking your work is the most essential part. Because no matter what you have written, if you have written wrong spellings and the grammar is wrong, marks will be deducted, okay? Yes, so I'm going to start uh, one audio. I'm sure almost every one of you looked at your watch or at a clock before you came to class today. Watches and clocks seem as much a part of our life as breathing or eating. And yet, did you know that watches and clocks were scarce in the United States until the 1850s? In the late 1700s, people didn't know the exact time unless they were near a clock. Those delightful clocks in the squares of European towns were built for the public. After all, most citizens simply couldn't afford a personal timepiece. Well into the 1800 in European and the United States, the main purpose of a watch, which, by the way, was often on a gold chain, was to show others how wealthy you were. The word wristwatch didn't even enter the English language until nearly 1900 by then. The rapid pace of industrialization in the United States meant that measuring time had become essential. How could the factory worker get to work on time unless he or she knew exactly what time it was? Since efficiency was now measured by how fast a job was done, everyone was interested in time. And since industrialization made possible the manufacture of large quantities of goods, watches became fairly inexpensive. Furthermore, electric lights kept factories going around the clock. Being on time had entered the language and life of every citizen. Hey. So I've got eight and a half minutes left and I've got my notes ready. So in the template in my head, okay, mainly about people's. Uh, now, so many of uh, you guys will ask me, is this people's in the template? Yes, definitely. It's in the template and we use this so that we protect our grammar errors. Okay. Uh, people's what? People's. So we have to think people's clocks, people's citizens, people's language, people's efficiency, people's quantities, whatever makes good sense, we will write that, okay? People's efficiency, I would prefer in this case. Then the speaker stated such words as there. And I'm writing only one word in one blank, okay? Not writing two. It's always better to find a plural word, but if not, then we can make do with singular as well, okay? Their towns and their citizens. Then this, moreover, their, mm, their language and their, what goes with language? And their, let me write, their time, their language, no, their clock, their time and their clocks, their clocks and their time, something like that, their clocks and their electric lights, 
were also discussed in the lecture. I'm trying to focus on plural nouns, okay, guys? Then in addition to this, the discussion was about their uh, time and also about their clocks. Now, I don't have enough plural words, so I have to write the word clocks. Then, last word, finally, the speaker concluded the lecture by stating the facts about their what else about there? Uh, I'm just clicking, ticking on the words that I've chosen. Clock, efficiency, towns, citizens, electric lights, um, time. Oh, clock, I've written two times. So this is not done. I have to write unique words. There. Not plural. Their language. I have written language. No. Okay. Language. Language. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now I need only one word. And that will be their purpose. Okay. Purpose. Um, all right. Good. Now what's the word count? 59. Now why is this 59? Because I've written electric lights. You can always mix up. You can write a phrase. It's not a problem. Uh, I'm checking my spellings, templates, full stops, commas, plural, singular, and anything extra words. I have United States, uh, but when we write names like United States and people's names, we need to be careful with the plural and uh, we need to be careful with um, capitalization. So... It's better not to write those words. And also, we have to be careful about the spellings, okay? United States is an easy word, but some of you might write United State. State is wrong. You have to write states, okay? Try to refrain yourself from using uh, prona proper nouns. Okay? These are proper nouns called United States. Even my name, Anusha, is a proper noun. Milestone study is a proper noun, okay? Company name will be proper noun. Yeah, okay, I'm done. Um, I'll read it final time, four minutes left. The audio was mainly about people's efficiency. The speaker stated such was as their towns and their citizens. Moreover, their clocks and their electric lights were also discussed in the lecture. The, in addition to this, the discussion was about their time and also about their language. The, finally, the speaker concluded the lecture by stating the facts about the purpose. Okay, finish. All right, that's it. Two by two for spelling, content, vocab, form, and grammar. That means 10 by 10. Okay, now how did I get it? By arranging and rearranging the words. I checked where should I write plural, where should I write singular. We have to focus on whatever they said, yeah? So if they said clock, I need to write clock. But I figured out later that they also said clocks. Watches and clocks, plural. That is how we do it. I'm not talking about any other template that you are following. I don't know what I don't know what template you are following, but if you are following this template, make sure it is a noun. Most probably plural nouns. Okay? Let's do one more. Honeybees do a waggle dance to direct other bees to sources of nectar, but dancing bees like this one can be halted by a headbutt from another bee. Now, researchers have found that this headbutt is actually a warning signal. A feeding station was set up in the lab to mimic a source of nectar. Then foraging bees were introduced to dangers at the station, such as competition from rival colonies. When foragers returned to the hive, they stopped bees dancing. Scientists think the behavior warns dancers of a dangerous source of nectar. <laughs> okay, only 30 seconds. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Exactly eight words. Wow. Let's write down again, okay? The audio was mainly about... I'm already nervous because I don't have enough words. People's 
people's word. But this was about bees, yeah? Anybody wants to write bees, then write bees with apostrophe after S, okay? Not before. If you are writing bees like this, wrong. You write bees with S apostrophe, okay? Or if somebody wants to just write about honeybees, you are also welcome to do that. But make sure it is plural, okay? The focus is on plural words. I know I'm saying this for a lot of time, but focus is on plural word. Um, so this is good. Okay, let me stick to this. The speaker stated such words as their uh, warning signal, and there, I'm just ticking the words that I've written. And their warning signal and their competition. Competition, okay, make sure of the spelling. Moreover, their competition gone. Colonies and their colonies gone. And their dangers were also discussed in the lecture. The in addition, okay, full stop, space, and then another word. In addition to this, the discussion. Okay, I'm you can see I'm nervous here. The discussion was about their dangers gone, their sources of nectar and also about their sources of nectar gone behaviors i'm not sure if they said behavior or behaviors i'm going with a plural i'm not sure should i go plural or singular then uh, finally the speaker stated such words as their only one last word which is researchers okay now Writing their researchers does not make much sense. So I'm just going to write the researchers, okay? You can always exchange the words. What am I missing here? The audio was, and also about, the audio was mainly about honeybees. The speaker stated such words as their warning signal and their competition. Moreover, their colonies and their dangers were also discussed in the lecture. In addition to this, the discussion was about, was about their sources of nectar and Am I missing one sentence? And also about their behaviors. Finally, the speaker stated such... Oh, no, no. Finally, the speaker concluded... Concluded the lecture by stating the facts about the researchers. Okay. Now, how did I find out that I was missing something or something was wrong? It's because of this word count. I saw that it was only 57 words. So... Obviously, something is wrong. I should have 58 words minimum, right? With the template and the words. And on top of that, I'm writing phrases as well. So how could it be 57? That was my question. This way you can analyze your answer and make it better, okay? Uh, okay, the only word I'm confused with is the behaviors, okay? So, because sometimes behaviors is taken as a plural word. Sometimes it's an uncountable word. Uh, I'm using American English here and I... And do suggest using English, American English in the exam as well. Um, most of their questions are in American English, okay? But doesn't matter. You can use British as well. Let's click on finish. I was left with, again, four and a five minutes, five minutes, okay? There's another 90 by 90, 10 by 10. Um, it, it, this time, I removed the word peoples, and instead chose to write honeybees, okay? You can use, you can remove the word peoples only if you are writing plural words on the top. That's it. Okay, guys, so I hope you learned something from this video. If you have more confusion, more queries, let me know in the comment section below. Use our website to check your marking. If something goes wrong, contact us via WhatsApp, Insta, and Facebook. We are, al we are always there to help you. Before leaving, let me tell you that we are launching our two-week course starting next week. So please remember to message us, to call us, or contact via WhatsApp uh, to enroll in this two-week course. And this is only for this exclusive 2024, January and February, okay? After that, I don't know. I'm not sure if we'll have that course or not moving forward. This is Anusha. Take care. Have a good day.